dust, 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 dust. There is a lot of dust in this world. Dust collectors and vacuums don't capture everything and inevitably this stuff gets airborne where we can breathe it. This video aims to answer what is the best way to filter this stuff and what method, including DIY options, will give you the best price for the highest performance. This video is geared mostly towards shop air filtration, but there will be useful info for people looking to filter the air in their homes as well. We will test just about every option out there so you can make the best decision on what is right for your space, the work you do, and your budget. In one of my latest videos, I discovered that a fan that I purchased to move 4,000 cubic feet per minute of air actually only moved 1,340 CFM. This sent me down the rabbit hole of manufacturing ratings versus real-world ratings. There are some questionable numbers out there, to say the least. I'll let you know what I found out so you don't have to make a giant foam wind tunnel like I did. The two best ways you can reduce dust levels in your space is with high airflow and effective filtration media. I have talked about air filters in previous videos, so I won't get into that too much today. The short of it is that I recommend MERV 14 filters because they are the cheapest and most accessible air filters that perform near the level of a HEPA filter. All of the air filters that I tested in today's video are using MERV 14 filters. So let's turn our attention to what this video is really about, airflow. Without high flow rates, you can't filter enough air to capture the dust before it settles on the ground and your tables and everything else. The more cubic feet per minute or meters cubed per second that your air filter operates at, the more dust it will be able to capture. So to find out a fan's real world performance, I built this wind tunnel. Measuring air velocity at the cage of a fan can give you a wide range of results that are difficult to convert into meaningful data. For instance, the air in the center of a fan has a velocity of zero and the edges have a high velocity, and there is a gradient in between them. What we really want is the average of these numbers. A good way to find an average is to let the air mix in a wind tunnel and achieve a more consistent speed. As I understand it, when fans are tested at the manufacturer, they are put up on a test stand something like this. The fan motor and blades may be tested on their own without the fan enclosures that can reduce airflow. We won't be doing that in the real world. The fan enclosure helps keep us safe. In fact, one of the only mishaps that I had with my original filtration unit is that a set screw got loose and the fan blades just fell off the motor one day. If there wasn't the cage there to stop the blades, they would have rocketed into the filter box and potentially torn the whole thing to pieces. A boost in airflow is not worth that risk. There are some things that may throw off my numbers in these tests. My insulation foam wind tunnel does introduce some static pressure to the system that would otherwise not be there. Static pressure is the industry term for something that slows down airflow. It can be produced by an air filter, a constriction, or a bend in a duct, or in this case, a material with a high static charge. So my testing rig is not perfect, but it does reflect a more real world estimate of the fan's performance. This device is also the lowest cost wind speed sensor or anemometer I could buy. The accuracy of this device is plus or minus 5%. I actually purchased another one of these to check them against one another and found the devices to vary by about 2%. Since I don't need two of these devices, one of the first 100 people to comment will get this unit shipped to them for free so they can test out their own devices. Now on to testing. To determine the average wind speed, the device is set to take an average speed. Then it's moved around the outside of the tunnel and then to the center. The wind tunnel can also be configured to square or round shapes. Four fans were tested without any filters attached. Here are the factory wind speeds and the real world wind speeds. Some are fairly close, some are really far off. The DIY configurations that were tested are a single one inch filter, a four inch filter, a four and five filter Corsi Rosenthal design, and then my own shop air filter with two different fans. There are several other professional shop air filters that are added into this mix. These numbers were pulled from a great article by Wood Magazine that thoroughly tested all of these units. There is a link in the description to that and everything else you see in this video. I was also able to test someone's air doctor and found the factory CFM rating was actually the output of the device. That was the only time that that happened while filming this video. 
Taking a closer look at some of these DIY options, the single air filter on the Lasco performs poorly. This might be acceptable for running in a mostly clean home, but it is just not going to do much of anything in a shop space or other dusty environments. The Air King performed better with the 1-inch filter and much better with a 4-inch filter. At this point, I would consider this a usable amount of filtration. I'll show you some examples of this in action later in the video. When we step up to the Corsi Rosenthal design, we can see that the reduction in static pressure created by adding more filter surface area significantly improves the Lasco fan's performance. Adding a fifth filter to the design increases airflow even more. The more powerful Air King fan brings that number up even higher. I think that this is a great option for filtering the ambient air in a workspace. My shop air filter leads the pack with 1340 and 1400 CFM with the two fans tested. Another thing I wanted to try was adding a cardboard shroud to the box fan design. Based on my research, this is the thing that everyone is doing. You can trace a nice circle on the air filter box with a pen and a string then cut it out with a razor or, better yet, an X-Acto blade. The shroud in some cases significantly blocks the fan blades in a few examples that I found. But even if it isn't, I got the exact same airflow with and without this taped onto the front of the fan. It is true that air in the corners of the box fan actually reverses flow when the air filter is attached. So if you are trying to prevent unfiltered air from entering the front of the fan, this device can help. But if you are expecting a meaningful performance boost, you might be disappointed. As I understand the fan shroud or ducted concept, you want the divider to be in line with the fan blades. This prevents unwanted wind vortices from forming around the edges of the blades. However, if the fan shroud is out in front of the blades, there is nothing to prevent those vortices from forming inside of the fan case. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that is why my tests with and without the shroud yielded the same result. I only found one article or video where the air speeds were thoroughly tested. What I'm unsure of is whether or not the airspeed ratings were taken over the fan's full surface area, or if these numbers were just taken from a single location on the fan. From the photos, it looks like the average wind speed was not taken into account, potentially throwing off the results. Take that with a grain of salt, because as best as I can tell, the Dean of Engineering at UC Davis, Jim Rosenthal, wrote that article. And you may also recognize his last name, because the Corsi Rosenthal box is named after him. And I went to school for video game design. So, yeah. This design is great. And his example uses 2-inch filters, which would further improve airflow to around the 1000 CFM mark that he achieved in his article. But do keep in mind that 2-inch filters are quite a bit more expensive than 1-inch filters. Talking about expense, let's look at performance versus price for all these models in dollars per CFM. I also calculated how much each would cost you over 4 filter changes, or about 2 years of use. Then I ran a few more tests with the single filter options as they are the most affordable, and I wanted to know exactly what you could expect from them. The dust in the air does not always make it through the YouTube compression process, but hopefully you can see what's happening here. In order for the 1-inch filter to capture the airborne dust, I need to be directly in front of the fan. If I throw some dust into the air, most of it ends up getting blown past the fan into the room. This seems like a great way to spread more dust throughout the space rather than control it. The 4-inch filter performs a lot better. It managed to pull the majority of the dust into the filter. I still need to be within a foot or two of the filter for the best effect. One thing I like about the larger Air King fan is that it's heavier and can actually stand on its own, unlike the Lasco fan which wants to tip over especially with the 4-inch filter. This design is able to pull in dust from a much greater distance than the box fan options. So, after all these tests, it's still the filter of choice for me. It's easy to clean dusty rags, parts, and much more while I'm working with castings that I want to keep flawlessly clear. 
Another casting-related use is to filter the oil vapor out of the air while I'm using my vacuum pumps to degas resins and mold mixes. Before setting up this exhaust tube, there was a noticeable smell of burning oil that this thing put out. The filter removes that smell completely. Another use I found is a quick and dirty spray booth. The results are good, but I would definitely recommend only using the fan with an enclosed motor and not running it when temperatures are over 90 degrees. This motor is probably not hot enough to ignite the solvents in the paint, but it's not worth finding out. Always remember to ventilate your space and wear a respirator when working with high VOC products. I have one more video planned for this series. It's all about developing great room scale circulation and further increasing airflow with even bigger fans. Needless to say, I would love to build and test these for the video, but I have no direct need for an air filter this large. I also don't have the budget to build them at the moment either. So if I can get 20 new patrons on Patreon at the $15 level for at least one month, I can afford to build and test two of these designs for that video. I can also ship the fan and filters that I use for the big builds to one of those lucky new patrons. Don't forget I am giving away this digital anemometer today. Just be one of the first 100 people to put a relevant comment down below. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. Stay safe, and of course, Stay classy.